Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday evening, uh, Wednesday morning, Wednesday, whatever, Thursday, wherever you're at. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. We have an exciting guest joining us today. Our guest was in many of your shoes not that long ago, and I wanted to bring in somebody to interview that you could relate to out there because I know a lot of people out there are trying to get into cybersecurity and really start their journey into this awesome field. So we've seen our guests grow from college student to an entry-level cybersecurity professional. You might know them from popular YouTube videos such as A Day in the Life of a Cybersecurity Student and What You Should Learn Before Cybersecurity. Let's go ahead and welcome our guest in, Grant Collins. Grant, welcome to the show. John, good to be with you. You've done your research there, I see. <laughs> I have to. I can't just bring somebody in and not not uh, not do research. OSN, right? No. <laughs> That's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so uh, just to start out for everybody, just a couple of general rules before we hop into the interview here. If you have a question, put a queue in front of it. That way I can easily pick it out of the queue. And then if you want to jump the line as we get more questions, go ahead and throw a super chat in there. But just to start out the stream uh, and the interview, Grant, why don't you uh, go ahead and just give us kind of a, an introduction about how you got started in cybersecurity? Yeah, absolutely. I um, well, my story isn't very glorious. I was in high school. I was looking for careers. Uh, I always wanted to do something with computers, and I was like, ah, maybe I can do something in programming. And at the time. Um, there was the Sony hack in 2014, and then um, there was the Ashley Madison hack. And so I started looking into security, and lo and behold, I kind of just started doing some self-study. I picked up a course on Udemy, like an introduction to cybersecurity course, and, and that got me started. Um, so since then, I chose to major in cybersecurity at a college based in Missouri. It's a pretty small college. And yeah, since then I've been in the industry um, working as a security engineer or associate security engineer. So, so more of an entry level position. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I definitely want to dive into that. Um, you know, one of the first questions that I have is uh, why a cybersecurity degree versus something like computer science? I mean, a lot of people that you know go into the field. There's there's varying backgrounds and things like that, but. Um, how, how did you pick that that type of degree versus like computer science? Yeah, that's, that's always a good question. And, um, you know, for me personally, it was a matter of looking at the curriculums. So I knew I was going to stay in a college in Missouri, um, just had the in-state tuition. And, you know, I was looking at these curriculums and I saw that, a few of the colleges at the time had undergrads in cybersecurity. And depending on, you know, who you ask, a lot of people are gonna say it's a it's a fraud and they're not worth it. And I can agree to some extent. But anyway, I uh, look at the curriculums and I thought at the time computer science from the curriculum perspective was a lot more theoretical, uh, you know, a lot more like uh, classes that just talked about theory and the cybersecurity curriculum that I was really interested in was hands-on um, diving into Cisco Net, Net um, what's it Cisco Netacad and CCNA they follow the CCNA course and then sure. added the layers on top of that uh, with with a few computer science salted in so it kind of got the best of both worlds where uh, there wasn't just a one particular area uh, you kind of got exposed to all areas sort of in IT. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. So something really interesting just with uh, degrees in general is that, um, I mean, you're definitely, you know, newer uh, to the industry, but when I was first starting out, which I've been in the field for about uh, nine, 10 years now, you know, a lot of these cybersecurity programs didn't even exist. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, a computer science degree or a, a CIS or an MIS kind of degree, or I guess, you know, history or something completely unrelated. Right. Um, and, uh, and it's, it's interesting to me because, um, you know, I, I went to one of the, uh, the really early on programs 
that existed. Um, so I, I actually went uh, for a master's in information assurance, which is kind of the, you know, the, the government's term for cybersecurity. So it's a lot of the same kind of curriculum and things like that. But it's interesting to me to kind of see the evolution as, you know, somebody that's just getting into this field, how there's a lot more, a lot more options uh, to kind of choose from and to have to, I guess, decipher which one you're, you're going to end up liking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think to expand on that, um, there are a lot of options. And, you know, I quickly learned as, uh, you know, uh, getting into college that college curriculums mostly are going to limit you in terms of what you can learn. Uh, they conform to the natural academic, you know, get an A in this class, you're good to go. And for me, you could, my perspective, you could gamify the system, you could, you know, study the right things, get the right grades and move on and really not retain or actually learn anything. Um, so college, I learned was just one piece to focus on. It was kind of like the what everyone says, like the HR check mark, so it gets you past the filter. But um, yeah, it is interesting to hear about kind of the evolution of degrees. And I'm really interested to see, I know I'm just a, you know, a little junior here, but I'm interested to see like how college graduates with cybersecurity degrees come out compared to say a computer science degree or a CIS. I'd be interested to see that um, because security, as you know, is specialized and sometimes it, it's good just to have a good general IT background. So, I mean, the, there's just all the different types of thoughts to uh, consider. Yeah, and I think that, you know, which one you pick, it really, it just, it shapes your path, right? Because something like computer science, I mean, typically, right, a lot of people are going to go into some kind of development path or something kind of along those lines in a, lot, in a lot of cases or a lot of people that I've met that have come from that background and then they kind of find their way into cybersecurity, whereas like a MIS or a CIS, potentially even a cybersecurity degree, you know, a lot of people are going into IT or into cybersecurity. And so it's, it really is interesting to kind of see those different paths and just the options or the opportunities that are available, depending on which way you go. Yeah. So I think that's definitely some, that's something interesting to kind of just consider, right? Yeah. It makes it hard to navigate as I'm sure you, you know, John, um, but it, it can make it hard to navigate as an entry level candidate it is like, what, what degree do I choose? What do I focus on? Um, Cause there's just, a, there's a lot of options out there. Yeah. And it's funny because it's like, um, you know, I, I get a lot of questions, you know, which, which path is best, which, what should I do in this situation? And I'm sure it's frustrating because sometimes people get the, it depends answer, right? Yeah. Because I, there are, are so many options. That's exactly it. I, that's how I always reply to my emails and it's, uh, well, it depends on, you know, where you're at and what you want to do. Um, but the best part about the IT industry, in my opinion, or one, one great pro is you get to learn on the side, right? You don't have to be, it's not like uh, accounting or in, in a medical profession where you, you kind of have to be in med school or uh, go to an accounting program. Like you can learn right now, you know, basically for free if you wanted to. Yeah. And that, that's a good point too, because, you know, in those professions, the accounting and the, the medical industry and things like that, you know, there's um, kind of these long standing uh, principles or, you know, really set in stone kind of things that don't necessarily change. I mean, obviously like medical profession, they're probably a little bit more advancement and things that change than like accounting, but um, you know, cybersecurity is the same way, right? Like we have things that change all the time and you have to keep learning. It's exactly, uh, you know, even, I mean, as you're a professional with, with many more years experience, I'm sure you, you've, you know, you're continuing to learn every day. It's, it's an ever evolving industry, um, which can kind of make it a double edged sword. Uh, it's fun. That's what energizes a lot of professionals, including myself. But when you have, say, you know, a personal life, you have a family, um, it, it can be challenging to navigate that. So there's, there's definitely a, a balance. Yep. 
And, you know, luckily for the people out there, there's great content creators like yourself and myself there and uh, <laughs> all the other ones. Shameless yeah. plug, but it's fine. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> that's, that's right. So, and by the way, out there, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And then also check out uh, Grant's channel as well. It is oh, uh, linked in the description. <laughs> John, you're doing the whole like, comment, subscribe. Oh, man. You have to. It's YouTube. Yeah. That's how we. Uh, that's how we. You know, rise to the top, right? <laughs> oh, right. You gotta do. You gotta click the notification bell too. That's what you gotta do as well. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I wish in uh, in this software that we're using, I wish that I had some of my animations because I would totally put that up there. <laughs> there you go. It's so, always a good reminder. There, there. Um, if you look at like YouTubers, Graham Stefan is one of them. Like you always hit the like button if you know who I'm talking about. And yeah, of course, yeah, one. yeah. So yeah, there's, there's some, it, it does work to some extent. Yeah. But, but seriously, if you, uh, if you do enjoy, um, you know, this interview after you watch it and you like the content or, um, you know, anything like that, definitely check out more of Grant's, uh, content as well as my content, um, on our channels. Cause there's a lot of good information out there. And, um, you know, one of the things that I think about is when I was first starting out and again, this is kind of, you know, back in my day, even though I was not that long ago. Um, but there wasn't a lot of content, even the last, you know, even like five, six years ago, the amount of content for like cybersecurity or IT or anything like that, it, there really wasn't that much. It's really been the last, you know, handful of years that it's really sprung up and there's been a lot more um, showing up. Absolutely. You know, even in the last, I agree, 100%. Um, it's incredible how many resources are out there um, today compared to probably four year, four or five years ago. Um, yeah. Hopefully so, that uh, continues to evolve. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I tell people all the time, um, and we'll we'll kind of talk about some personal branding and things like that throughout this uh, throughout this interview. But you know, definitely. Um, you know, content creation in general is just one thing that I tell a lot of people to, you know, get into and I encourage it. I mean, um, everybody kind of has a unique perspective on what they can put out there. And in general, you know, even if something has been done before, chances are you probably have a unique spin on that or a unique uh, perception of how to actually know that piece of information or how to present it. So absolutely. I 100% agree. I uh, read a piece actually the other day um, by Daniel Meisler or Meisler. I don't know how you pronounce yeah. his last name, but he shared a, a, a blog post from his friend uh, talking about content creation and how that puts you out uh, in front of a, a global audience. And even if it's trivial things like me, like I do, uh, you know, nothing that's super technical or crazy, um, you know, there's always learning. And it, it's, uh, I 100% agree with you, John. I, I encourage anyone and everyone to, to, to make a blog or a YouTube, whatever that is in, in their fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, kind, of, um, kind of shifting gears a little bit, but yeah. um, I kind of want to talk about um, just your, um, and you don't have to mention your employer or anything like that, but just kind of like your overall um, you know, your overall experience with your job. So, you know, what it's like, kind of the things that you do and, um, you know, how, how, uh, I guess, yeah, just how your, your overall, um, perception of how your, your, you know, your, how it's evolved, how you got into your job and things. Right. Yeah. I, I can, you know, of course, uh, talk about that. I have to keep things pretty broad, obviously. Sure. Um, but so I graduated in December uh, of this past year. So I've been in the industry for like, what, seven months? So um, not that long. But uh, so far what I've done is I got a job um, and I was really fixated on this particular job. It was in consulting. And they were going to bring me on as an associate, uh, basically just kind of similar to what I am now, but as an, in a consultant role, different company. Uh, but I was really sold on, you know, kind of being mentored by some consultants and then moving on. You can even see in my previous, like, what am I going to do after college video? I'm really fixated on getting into consulting. Well, I got into this, this company, 
found out that consulting was not the right move at the right time, given my ex experience level and even my knowledge. And so I quickly pivoted to an internal role for a company. And um, since then, I've been with this company and I, I've really enjoyed the company and the team that I work with. So right, right now, what am I doing? Um, it's it's a lot of everything, kind of a jack of all trades. I'm getting exposed to different areas. So, you know, as you as associate security engineer, there's the associate in the beginning. And the way that the, my company frames this is it's called level one. And basically, you're not going to be somebody who is um, going to be an, a SME or a subject matter, matter expert in one particular area, maybe. You're just getting exposed to a lot of different areas within the team. So I've been poking around a lot lately in vulnerability management, but I've done a bit of EDR stuff as well as a small bit of network security. Uh, but mostly right now, uh, it's been vulnerability management. And I'm touching both uh, cloud stuff and on-prem stuff. Uh, that's probably as much as I can go. But yeah, sure. it, it, it's really, it, it's been a good process of getting exposed to a lot of different areas, even within my team. Uh, and this is just one area uh, within the entire security organization as a whole under this company. Sure. Um, yeah. So that, that's a little bit of a background. Yeah. So I guess, um, you know, the question that I have uh, to follow up with that is, you know, going into um, into a role, especially like your first um, your first full time role, especially in cybersecurity, um, you know, going into it, you have kind of this expectation of X, right? Something. And now that you've been in that role for a while, I guess, how has, you know, the, the reality kind of shaped out to that? And does that max, mat, uh, match your expectations of what you had going into that role? Or is it like drastically different? I, I think it's, it's a combination of both. So I knew that from previous internships that I wasn't going to be like, all right, day one, hands-on keyboard, we are getting, you know, root or domain admin, you know, yeah. I knew that I wasn't getting into a position like that, right? And uh, there's no issue with that. It's just I knew I wasn't going to be the reality of a lot of corporate enterprise security jobs. So that I knew, but I was fixated on one particular area and since then, I've, I've kind of learned that everyone has their own path. And for me, I thought I had to be specialized day one. So for that, I thought cloud security, I'm going to be specialized. I have to be, you know, knowing whatever it is that is cloud security. But I figured out that, you know what, like you don't have to always just be fixated on one particular area, especially when first getting started. And this was something that I kind of learned throughout my interviews with this company is that you can be kind of a jack of all trades if, if you want to, depending on, on the position. And I always thought that, that was not a good idea, that that would be you know career suicide. But especially as an entry level person, um, jack of all trades has been really good for me because I've been able to poke around in different areas. So that was one, uh, I guess, reality that I learned when I was on the job. Another thing uh, was just the organization as a whole and working from home, I, I work from home, um, is a little different than being in office. I'm sure I don't, well, I'll ask you, John, or do you work from home or are you in office? Uh, both. Yeah. yeah. I, I've, it's funny you mentioned that because um, for everybody out there trying to get into cybersecurity, uh, before all this pandemic stuff, uh, a lot of the cybersecurity roles forced to be on site. Like there was no like negotiation here. Um, you know, a lot of the the high tech companies, even the Googles and stuff like that, um, we've seen a lot of their policies kind of shift, and that's not like necessarily true with a lot of um, with a lot of companies that are out there. But I, I've been fortunate enough to have the experience to do both. Yeah, and that's great. Uh 
you know, there's great, there's pros and cons to both. Anyway, but long story short, I, I was, um, one of the realities I realized was it's a little different when you're working from home and trying to figure out the infrastructure and environment when you're an entry level candidate and you're working from home and you're interfacing with your colleagues and coworkers through zoom or through video conferencing, it's a little different. Um, so that was another reality that I kind of uh, learned and, and picked up pretty quickly. And, um, yeah, I mean that there were other things here and there, uh, but it was just a few, few things. I don't want to keep rambling here. So. No, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah. I mean, definitely, um, you know, a few things to kind of, un uh, unpack there. Um, you know, just as far as the jack of all trades, I think that, you know, that's not uncommon to kind of think that, um, you know, either that you, um, kind of going into it, that you should be a jack of all trades or that you should kind of specialize. And I think that, you know, in, in my opinion, especially when you're kind of starting out, uh, kind of being more broad, being more that that jack of all trades or a ge more of a generalist kind of mindset, it does get you more exposure into a lot of different areas. And I mean, I, I think that, you know, kind of as you progress in your career, you'll just naturally start to specialize or pick that area that you really want to focus in. And, you know, either way is great. Um, I think, you know, kind of long term, uh, starting to uh, specialize eventually that's kind of where you really start to push those upper upper limits of uh, compensation, which everybody loves, you know, right. exactly. <laughs> and uh, because you start to be like that expert that people really want to go to for whatever topic it is. Um, but I mean, there's a place for both, right? And um, definitely depending on the company, uh, a lot of smaller companies, you're going to be more of a, a generalist or a jack of all trades. Uh, whereas, you know, you go to a Fortune 500 company or something, you know, very massive, then you're going to start to specialize because they they just have more people, they have more funds, and they can start to kind of silo things a little bit. That's yeah, great. Uh, great advice and, and um, great insight there, John. I 100% I agree. And, um, you know, I think for me, um, one of the big struggles after college was I, I thought that through my academic studies, I would find the one particular area and a lot of my class classmates or um colleagues i guess they they already had an idea of what they wanted to do and i didn't and that was tough for me i knew that there were some areas that i didn't want to be in in particular but i didn't know exactly where i wanted to be so i felt very conflicted because i thought well i gotta market myself you know, when I'm in throughout these interviews, I, I got to be able to say, you know, um, this is what I'm good to, or this is what I know, right? But especially as, as a, I guess, an associate or a junior level guy, you're not, depending on the company, you know, they're going to, they're going to form, form you and they're going to uh, train you. So it's, it's, it's a, it's an insecurity I've had for a while. And still something that I struggle with to this day. But I think, you know, it's all about perspective and, and, and taking the opportunities that you do have in front of you. As cheap yeah. as that is, but yeah. No, for sure. I mean, I, I think that especially kind of starting out, it's it's hard to conceptualize that you're not necessarily going to know everything or that you're not going to come in, you know, 100% qualified maybe even for a specific job. And, um, you know, you, you're, re it's really about being able to learn on the job. I mean, yeah, you've got to have, um, kind of a baseline of skills or knowledge, but you know, in this career field, a lot of what you're going to know and use is going to be learned probably on the job. And, uh, also too, I mean, your first job is not going to be your last job, right? Like if you go into a uh, help desk as your first job, you know, that's probably not going to be your last job in 20, 30 years. And, you know, if you go into cloud security or wherever, right, it's, it's going to change. I mean, heck, you might go into cybersecurity and then switch into IT and do like system administration or something. It just, it's how it goes. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Um, you just never know. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of have to follow, follow the opportunities at the time. And um, so 
I think a big thing that I've also learned is you know, as getting into the work, the IT and enterprise world is there's a lot of knowledge that you have to know for sure, but there's also soft skills, um, communication, and just general business skills that are hard to develop unless you're actually in the environment or in a business environment. So those are some other things that I've actually learned a lot um, throughout my process. Yeah, it's crazy because to me, in the grand scheme of things, and what I've seen with a lot of people is that the, uh, the technical skills, if, I, if we're going to rank difficulty to, uh, or least difficult to most difficult, a lot of people in this field, uh, the technical skills are easier than developing like the, the communication skills or the um, semi-political skills, I guess, of organizations and how to maneuver all that stuff. Because, you know, you have to deal with people, you have to communicate, you have to do all this stuff that um, it's not really talked a lot about in like a security plus or, you know, one of these certifications right. or degree programs or whatever. And, um, you know, so developing those skills is absolutely huge. So for sure. And, and that, that can be, um, you can train yourself in, in some ways, I guess, outside the classroom, but there are you know, you kind of have to learn those on the job as well. It's a, it's a combination of both. Yep, absolutely. So um, when you were going through your degree program, you know, what kinds of things uh, did you do in order to build your knowledge or build your skills like internships or labs or, you know, what kind of, what kind of stuff did you do? So I, you know, I, I don't know if my approach was the best, but I kind of floated by in terms of the academics of school. I tried to take what I could out of it. Um, unfortunately, at my time, the, per the program that I was under went from kind of a hands-on practical to more theory-based. Uh, and so we were, when I started out, we were using Cisco Netacad and and, you know, going through hands-on labs, it was really, it was a good program. And then all of a sudden we've changed to writing axis control equations and it, it just things that weren't really relevant to an everyday cybersecurity professional. So kind of what I learned there was, okay, if I'm going to really build skills or a portfolio, um, I'm going to need to go outside the classroom because a lot of my classmates were just like, yeah, you know, do do whatever it is, uh, you know, do the, the grades and move on. So what I did was I started with hands-on projects and they were really basic. I mean, they were like throwing up a virtual machine and, and playing around with a particular program or connecting to virtual machines. I mean, it was very, very basic, but I tried to document what I was learning throughout my process, either through a blog post or whatever it was, like we talked about earlier. And I knew that I was a noob and I, I mean, it was, I was just some, some script kitty out there trying to do nothing basically. But, you know, I figured that if I could just teach one person something, then it would be worth it. And so that kind of just iterated upon itself where I do some projects and, and, um, that eventually led me to an internship opportunity, um, and that, that was basically through, that was through a net, networking contact. So that wasn't through like, a, I applied to an online job search engine website and, and aced the interview. It was, I knew someone who knew someone. So that was kind of the thing that got me my first internship. And that got me exposed to a whole different world of business. And so on top of both the internship side projects, blog. Um, I did the Security Plus certification throughout my studies and then college. Those were kind of the, the four areas that I focused on to build this portfolio when I left school. Okay. And then to kind of dive into that a little bit more, yeah. which areas do you think were the most impactful or the, the most impactful area versus like the least impactful area? If somebody was going to try to you know, kind of recreate some of the things that you did? I think the 
probably the most impactful was the networking part. Um, and the least impactful was probably my, my college studies. Uh, I think really a lot of security or, or general IT, whatever business, it comes down to who you know. Um, and so there were many mistakes that I made. For instance, I didn't participate in my, uh, there's a cyber defense club um, competitions that universities have, they have teams. I'm sure you know that. And, you know, they go around competing with other teams. I didn't participate in any of that. I don't even know why I did, didn't do that. Um, looking back, it was really dumb. But that was a good opportunity to, to network with some of my classmates who wanted to go outside the classroom and learn. So that was a mistake that I made. But what I did was I network with, I try to find professionals. I try to leverage uh, people outside of, of the university setting um, to just ask questions. I would go to lunch with them and I would ask questions about what is security like? What, what, what can I be working on? And um, so that was very impactful for me because I got insight into how the industry was, but I also got an insight into what professionals are looking for in entry level candidates. And then the least impactful was my studies. Like I said earlier, I mean, I, I basically, it's so hard to learn something that is memorization based and then you never reference it again. And a lot of the, the teachers, um, they just didn't have a ton of industry experience uh, and, and, and this particular university. So it's not that they didn't know, they came from an academic background is what I'm trying to say. So it wasn't, which is good, but it wasn't the area that I wanted to get into. So those were kind of both impacts and the impactful area networking and then the, the least impactful was my academic studies yeah awesome yeah i think it's you know really interesting with a lot of degree programs and things like that and kind of how they've evolved i mean kind of like i said earlier you know i i went back into a master's program and i as you're kind of going through your your undergrad program i'm kind of like comparing and thinking about back to when i was going through my program because I look at, um, you know, for instance, my undergrad was in business and it sounds like it's a sim very similar experience to your undergrad program where I think, and those kind of programs, it tends to be a lot of the academic kind of thinking and the, um, you know, the kind of the conceptual kind of thinking um, versus like my, my master's program, you know, in my master's program, I don't think I had a single test. I had to do a lot of uh labs and a lot of research papers and things like that and you know it, looking at your program what would you say as far as like the i guess just kind of the general breakdown as far as like did you have like a ton of like actual tests or um you know hands-on labs or kind of how did that that work there in in the security classes alone there were no labs there were all memorization based tests um so that that was tough to relate to because i knew industry wasn't going to be you know uh answering a on this question and then b oh. but uh so the classes that were like cisco netacad that were networking mm -hmm. based all hands-on labs all very practical and of course they were following Cisco Netacad, so that's great. But, um, you know, I, I think that was my, that was my experience. I mean, it was just very yeah. test-based ace this test and then you get the good grade and then you move on. And, and, um, you know, I, I it's a trap that you can fall into. Um, and it's something that I, I did at the time a little bit. Yeah. I think that's something, you know, important to consider if, you know, anybody's out there looking at a degree program or anything like that, that you need to, you know, really look at the curriculum, look at who the instructors are and kind of, you know, what, what you're going to get out of it. Um, I think it, it varies between programs and, um, you know, you just have to be kind of aware of those things. Um, you know, and I'm sure you had a lot of the, the general uh, prerequisite kind of courses and stuff like that you had to go through uh, in your program as well. Um, 
but yeah, d- definitely just something to kind of be, uh, be aware of, you know, for anybody that's out there, um, thinking about these kind of programs. I like to give all the options so people, you know, kind of know everything that's out there. Um, cause ultimately, I mean, you know, everybody has to make their own decision and kind of weigh the value of different programs and different options and things like that and where they think that's going to lead them. So yeah, absolutely. Possibly. Um, definitely the, uh, and you made a great point about networking too. I mean, networking and we're talking about people networking here, right? Right. People, yeah. not, not just, uh, uh, you know, a Cisco router or something like that, that kind of networking, which is valuable knowledge as well. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, knowing people in the industry, you know, there's a lot of associations and things like that, that you can join that are out there. Uh, like you had your, um, the, the team that you could have joined, uh, at your university, but there's also, you know, associations like OWASP and, uh, ISSA and, uh, IEEE and IAC squared and all these kind of things that especially as a student or somebody that's really new to the industry, you know, taking advantage of these kind of, uh, opportunities is really important because, there are people that are hiring managers that go to these. There are people that could be your coworkers or that are your peers. And, you know, eventually, right, if you meet enough people, somebody's going to help you get a job. And so knowing more people does nothing but help you. Uh, and worst case, right, like if you have a problem at work, maybe that person that you met at one of these meetups had that same problem before or can help you kind of expedite that process of fixing that problem. So. There's definitely a lot of value in that. 100%. Uh, very true and, and something that uh, you will probably continue to navigate and also learn. Um, you know, as a junior associate, there's a lot that I still have to learn when it comes to networking and, and with people. Uh, so, yeah, that's great advice. The learning never stops. We are all always learning. <laughs> so that's, right. that's exactly it. So, um, you know, talking about networking, uh, in your, um, you know, in your program, in your kind of journey and even, you know, now, uh, have you had, or did you, uh, do you have, uh, any kind of mentors like, um, any professors or people that you met in the industry that kind of helped you navigate through these different, you know, channels or avenues, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, my first mentor was uh, at my first internship. It was, a, it was actually two mentors. It was my manager and then um, my coworker. And uh, they were very good and insightful with just exposing me to the broad area of security. When I was going into the internship, I was 18 years old and you know, I was thinking, ah, cybersecurity, you know, I'll throw up a Kali Linux shell or I don't know, you know, I just didn't really have a huge conception of like how broad security was. And um, at the time they were going through an audit. So I didn't even know what an audit was. Uh, So they really did a good job of just exposing me to the different areas. They let me explore both security as a whole, but then go into other areas of IT. So go talk to the developers, go talk to database administrators and the networking team. Um, so that was great. That was my, my, my mentors. I'm forever grateful for them. Um, and then I have a mentor right now that I really like, really look up to. Um, he also does a great job of explaining things and, and walking me through, um, you know, the different areas of security and just helping me out with navigating general security as a whole. Uh, So I've had several mentors throughout my time. Um, And then I have also a really close uh, or a close friend who has really helped me as well. He was a a couple years ahead of me at my college degree program. So I've had several different uh, mentors at different stages. Uh, I all three of them at different stages of their careers. One of them was kind of just a few years ahead of me. One's been kind of mid, mid, mid level. And then my first mentors were, um, yeah, more of a senior principal level. Uh, so it was great. It was good to see the different uh, perspectives that they all had. Um, and I highly encourage that 
if you have the opportunity to find a mentor uh, at your job or internship or uh, academic institution, do it. You know, that, that is huge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any way that you can uh, learn information quick or like shortcut potential mistakes that other people have made in their careers, you know, that it just does nothing but help you because we're all trying to get kind of that high level, uh, whether that's the highest position or the highest pay, you know, whatever it is. And, um, you know, information is, is power and, uh, definitely that that's very helpful. So that's, that's awesome. Um, so I've done a lot of the questions. I'm going to start bringing up some questions from the audience here. I definitely have more questions that we'll, we'll hit on, but let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and hit on some of these. So yeah. this first question, uh, Network Plus or CCNA first or Cloud Cert as a foundation. So I'm not sure if you have any uh, opinion on that. Well, uh, I will give my, I guess, two cents. So I haven't, uh, I have, I do not have a CCNA or the Network Plus, so I can't speak to the exams. But uh, I, I have heard, and based off of my previous studies, the CCNA I think is is definitely a little bit more hands on. Um, and so I, I'd recommend the CCNA over the network plus, and then from a cloud or CCNA, I guess, or, you know, a network plus perspective, I, I think you can't go wrong with either one. Um, I, I think it depends on, on where you are wanting to go. I, like I said, didn't have a CCNA or network plus, but I started with some AWS certifications and, and there is a learning curve there, but I think you can go with either one it kind of just depends like we've talked about what do you think john yeah so i you know i'm i'm a real believer that you know in one way or another that you gotta know how networks work um you know because a lot of the stuff that we do is just really kind of based on that and it kind of evolves out of that whether that means certification i mean that's definitely another discussion um because you know i'm definitely a fan of certifications i um specifically with the network plus and CCNA. I mean, I, I have the network plus I had two CCNAs and I kind of did a whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of certifications as I was coming up. And, um, for me personally, I let my CCNAs expire because I never used them. Like I literally never used that Cisco specific knowledge. I mean, you still use like the, the OSI model and stuff like that. And it kind of depends, you know, um, like, are you, you know, are you getting interviews? Are you in a job? Like there's a lot of factors that go into that. Um, but you know, as far as knowing the OSI model and stuff like that, I think you get a lot of that stuff with both. Um, and I tell people to learn about cloud for sure. Um, I, I wouldn't tell people probably to learn cloud first, just because again, it kind of, it's kind of this evolution, right? Like you've got to kind of build from the bottom, like, okay, I learned about computers, learn about uh, operating systems, learn about networking, like all this stuff. And then you just kind of, cause it all stacks on top of each other. So. Exactly it. Yeah. You got to know what a, a subnet is before, you know, you go out and create your VPC in AWS, for instance. Um, so yep. that that's very true. It's like Lego, Lego building. You just got to keep building on those uh, skills and knowledge. So, yeah. And I, I, I haven't taken the network plus, but based off the exam objectives, it looks like a good, you know, just base, right. Base for networking concepts that can be applied in anywhere basically. So, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, this one's for you. Uh, Richie says, which university and, uh, was their program good? So I guess I'll, I guess I'll tweak it a little bit and say, you know, you went through the degree program. Is that something that you would do again? Or I guess, how would you change it if not? I went to, uh, yeah, I'll answer Richie's question. So I went to uh, Southeast Missouri State University. It's based in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Um, it has like an undergrad, I think of like 8,000. I, I could be wrong, but it's it could, it's a smaller college. Uh, what I do my degree program again, as you've heard now, I kind of have bashed upon, upon this program. I, I think there is some good to it, but the biggest thing that I would go back and do isn't the curriculum itself is just networking and having fun with my classmates. 
that was through the CCDC club, but also they had other different clubs there that were just general security clubs um, that were being created when I was there. So that's something I would go back and do 100%. And uh, I would start uh, day one as a freshman working with the uh, more experienced kids. And yes, so that's something I would do. Uh, I would probably, I don't know. I, I think it depends on how you look at the degree program, but I wouldn't go in with as as much of a high expectation as I did originally with with actual hands on knowledge. But that's all going to depend on your curriculum and, and your program. Like I've heard WGU uh, is pretty good depending on where you go. And so there, there's it just depends on the college. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the answer to Richie's question. Hopefully that helps. Awesome. Awesome. So this next one up here. So from uh, Jace, uh, Jay Sarah, uh, I want to do cybersecurity. Is uh, Security Plus a good way to start? So if you want to go ahead and take that and then I'll hop in after. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Security Plus is a great place to start, I think. It's a lot of memorization, but uh, there's some really good concepts and exposure that you just get. The Once again, kind of like with the networking, Network Plus, you just have to understand the foundations. And I feel like the Security Plus does a good job of that. No, you're not going to be hands-on keyboard throughout the exam, but I do think it offers a good, solid foundation. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. So I uh, actually, in my journey, I the very first certification that I got was a Security Plus. Um, and then I went back and got the Network Plus and the CCNA. Um, and I think that you know, with Security Plus specifically, I mean, CompTIA certifications in general too, they are meant for people that are, you know, really new to the industry or relatively new to the industry. And so they're, they're really built in a way such that, you know, most people can kind of come in and get a lot of the information or at least kind of conceptualize a lot of the information. Because again, they're not, you know, they're not hands-on. So you're not going to have to go in and configure a Cisco router or something that um, maybe technically is a little bit more complicated. And so I, I think there's definitely, you know, value in doing that. I think if I, if, if I gave kind of the ideal pathway, right, there's always the ideal pathway. Um, I, I probably wouldn't have that as my first certification um, just because again, it kind of, you know, everything stacks on, on top of each other. Um, so it, it might not be the most efficient way in a lot of situations, but I, I think it's doable. And a lot of people will do that, um, do that certification too. And, you know, it will definitely, uh, it will give you kind of insight into where your knowledge level is at or where your capability is at. Because if you are really struggling and trying to learn that material, then, you know, try to identify why you're struggling. Are, are you really weak in networks? And maybe that's, where you're struggling or, you know, something. And then you can kind of go from there as far as other things to study. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great insights. Let's see here. Let's throw this one up here. So, uh, Spart of us, uh, says, what are the most influential people that you've met in the industry other than the great John good? <laughs> there you go. I did not pay. I did not pay for that comment. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> You're very influential, John. <laughs> so let's see. I, I mean, there, there's there's personal contacts that I know who have been very influential, like I've talked about um, with my my mentors. Uh, like I said, Daniel. I don't know Meisler, Beisler. I never know how to pronounce his last name. He was really influential for me. I really liked it. I really, really like his perspective on things. Um, there is a, a host uh, that runs a podcast called Security Now, Steve Gibson. Really big fan of him. He's a genius. Uh, and then I also really like Brian Krebs. Uh, he's he's a kind of a journalist. Talks about he just he he does a blog, but uh, I really really like him. So those those were just a few of the kind of the public figures that that I've been influenced by, uh, big time. 
Yeah, I think, you know, for me too, it's, it's very, very similar. You know, one thing that you'll find is that as you start going through like training courses or, you know, meeting people at meetups or reading articles that people have written, um, you know, all these people kind of start to influence you or uh, have an impact on you. And, you know, that that's a good thing, right? And you want to be obviously aware of, you know, the sources that you're taking in information because you don't want to let bad influences in or, you know, bad influential people because it could go either way. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, there there's a lot of um, very useful resources out there. And kind of like what we said earlier, you know, on YouTube, there's a lot of people that are, um, you know, that are very experienced or that are, you know, on the newer side. And a lot of people have valuable things to bring, bring to the table, right? And especially like as a new person, you know, a lot of the similar things that like Grant has gone through fairly recently, um, you know, those are going to be similar things to what you're going to see in your career versus like somebody like me who has been in the career, uh, in the career field for a little bit. So we, we've seen some different things. We've seen different evolutions. Like when I was first starting out, cloud wasn't really a thing that we talked about a lot. And as far as like even the security plus version that I took about, uh, took, I don't think that there was a lot of information or even topics about cloud. Um, you know, obviously it was a couple of versions ago, but um, I think the 301 was the version that I took. And so now it's up to 601. Um, so, you know, the, there's shifts like that, but yeah, definitely um, just, you know, be on the lookout for people that provide a lot of valuable information out there. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there was a one huge influence that was a personal contact even, um, you know, he he was a huge influence on um, my perspective and just getting myself into the industry. He's the reason why I even have the job that I have now. And so just finding those people who are willing to believe in you and, um, you know, really, truly uh, put faith in you, I think is, is huge. It doesn't have to be always these people with huge follower accounts. It can be just a, a personal contact, you know, those are going to be the people who really make an impact on your life. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I want to jump back to some of the yeah. questions that I have and that we have, we have some more that are, that keep coming in as well. Um, but so looking back to when you started to apply to jobs and, you know, that whole process of job searching, you know, what, what was that whole process um, process like? Did you apply to a whole bunch of different jobs or were you really sp uh, targeting a very specific kind of job? So like like I said, I, I was really fixated on a consulting role for a particular company. And so I was really just, I wanted to get into it. I took months to try to find an interview or, or try to find a spot to get an interview. So I got that interview and, and, um, you know, I, I got in eventually. So there wasn't a lot of applying on my side. There was a few applications here and there, and there really wasn't. And looking back now, I didn't apply to any online positions. I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. two or three, uh, it was really just like, okay, I wrote down a list of everyone I knew who was in security. I was like, okay, I'm going to start reaching out to these people. Uh, even for lunch or for whatever it was and just to see if I could uh, try to find some sort of position or maybe they know somebody. And so uh, that was really how I got in uh, to my, wow. my position now. Well, yeah, that's, that's lucky. A lot of, a lot of people, uh, you know, put out 20, 30, 40 resumes uh, or applications and, uh, you know, but I think that's an important point is that if you can utilize your, your network and your connections, um, you, you can really target specific companies or specific, um, types of positions and, you know, be relatively successful in getting, getting in there. Right. Yeah. And I think from, from an online perspective, cause you know, it, it's not everyone's going to have, uh, that network, right. They may not be in a, a lo geographical location that's has meetups or like you said, John, any of the, the organizations that, that meet up. 
um, you know, you can always try to network online, which I know is a little different, but uh, that that was actually, that's how I got my job now was not through like a, a person. I mean, it was through a personal contact, but it wasn't through somebody I've ever met in, in person. So you, you have to keep that in mind too, that even if the limitations of, uh, you know, finding meetups, for instance, or going to college, that's okay. Like, you know, you, that's fine. There's other ways that you can network with people. Yeah, I think that is definitely um, one thing that's shifted as far as, you know, just online connections, um, things like LinkedIn, where you can, you know, connect with, you know, thousands of people pretty easily you know, relatively easily, right. <laughs> but, but, um, you know, you can interact with people, uh, across the whole spectrum of the industry. And I know like when I go on my, like my LinkedIn and I go to like first connection, second connection, third connection and kind of combine them, you know, it says there's like 1.4 million people or something like that for cybersecurity. And that's, I mean, obviously you're not going to connect with that many people. Cause I think LinkedIn tries to limit how many people yeah. you connect with anyways, but, but, um, you know, that that's amazing because you can, you can put out a post or you can go to, uh, comment on that many people's theoretically that many people's, uh, uh, posts and profiles and things like that. So there, there's a lot of opportunity out there as long as you're willing to put in some effort and, uh, kind of learn, you know, how a specific platform like LinkedIn or something works and really start to build that network and, you know, grow your, your uh, virtual presence, even if it's not just like a, uh, um, an in-person presence. So that's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It. So, um, one question that I had is, you know, obviously you have a, a pretty big YouTube following and, yeah. um, you know, what, what made you really want to start doing YouTube? Like what, what prompted that? So as I prefaced a little bit earlier, I started out, so, I mean, it was kind of, it kind of just, uh, I worked my way into YouTube. Originally, what I was doing was I created a website called Cyber Intern Academy, and I really wanted to create this cool website that was like about how to get a cybersecurity internship because I had just gotten one. I was like, oh, I can maybe share my experience. Long story short, all I was trying to do on YouTube was trying to promote traffic to that website. But then I found out that, you know what, that that's that's cool, but that's not the model that I really want to do. And so I, was, I decided that I was just going to start putting out some basic projects or basic advice on my YouTube channel. And that kind of, that, that, that uh, iterated upon itself where I started to learn about different areas of security. And then I would talk about my projects or I would talk about this area. Um, and it really wasn't like a, I want to, you know, create this huge YouTube channel one day, or, I mean, you know, it was just more of an iterative approach and, and learning along the way. So, yeah, I mean, my YouTube journey has just kind of been a, um, I don't know. It, it just has kind of worked its way out so far. Yeah. I mean, you're growing. He's got a play button in the back. If you don't see it on the screen, <laughs> you will get so, there. One day, John. Get there. <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. That's right. Um, you know, it, it's really interesting with the whole YouTube and content creation thing and just, you know, putting stuff out there. Um, one of the things that I try to tell people too, is that, um, you know, doing well, building your personal brand in general is really important because it kind of, it gets your name out there, but especially with things like, uh, YouTube, or if you're doing like tutorials or like walkthroughs or anything like that, you know, being able to teach somebody or to explain your thoughts and how you kind of walked through in the process of doing something, you know, it, it forces you to think a lot more about it. It forces you to be more articulate about it, and it really uh, it cements that and makes sure you have a better understanding of something. And so it's, you know, being able to create the videos and things like that, especially you know relatively early on in your career, uh, is definitely 
you know, a, a very valuable uh, thing to, to learn and to get really good at. And I, I really encourage anybody that is out there to, even if you don't want to do YouTube, right? Like YouTube is not for everybody. It's, you know, totally, totally understand because not everybody wants to be on camera and show their face and, yeah. you know, do all the other uh, stuff right. <laughs> associated with YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do. You can create a blog, you can comment on LinkedIn, and a lot of this stuff doesn't involve you being on, you know, on camera. Um, and all of that can contribute to your skill set because a lot of the stuff, you know, you're going to have to do in one way or another, uh, whether that's writing, whether that's uh, talking or communicating, presenting information, you know, and that's kind of a form of going back to the uh, building those non-technical skills that we kind of talked about earlier. And, um, you know, it's this career is definitely, you know, centered around a lot of the technical stuff. But a lot of that stuff matters and a lot of that stuff will set you apart the better that you can get at it. Um, and I, I tell people too, you know, one of the things that we see a lot in this industry is that it definitely attracts people that are a little bit more introverted, maybe that don't want to uh, put themselves out there as much. And, you know, that that's totally fine. You know, that that's just the kind of personality that attracts. But at the end of the day, you can't run away from dealing with people or, writing or some of this other stuff, right? Like it's not just about every day, every second, like throwing commands in the command line and not dealing with anybody. Right. Yeah. So. That's, a, that's sound advice, John. Um, sound advice and something I hope to, to follow up to, you know, continue to anyway. So uh, we're getting kind of, kind of close uh, or, you know, we've been going for a while. It yeah. uh, looks like just over an hour, but um, you know, couple questions to kind of just wrap this whole thing up. You know, uh, the first thing is over your, your career so far and kind of your, your journey, you know, what are some of the biggest struggles, I guess, or hurdles that you would say that you've had to overcome coming in from, you know, zero when you started your program originally and through now getting your, your job that you have now? Uh, one is experience. I know it's, I mean, I think the experience gap now that I'm like a, you know, sort of in the industry now, I can understand where hiring managers or um, people who have experience in security, it's, it's hard to hire on a, an entry level position or, or individual or candidate that, um, doesn't have a lot of IT experience in, in general and, and a lot of business experience. There are definitely companies that will help you throughout that process. And those are the companies that you, you should look for, the ones that are who are willing to develop you, um, not the roles that are in particularly are uh, just going to burn you out or they're you know, there, there's different factors you have to keep in mind, but that was one that, that I've learned a big time. Um, that was, that was a struggle. Um, and I think another one was confidence, uh, confidence in myself. So, you know, when you're on a, a zoom call or video conference call, I, I feel very intimidated because I'm young and I don't know crap, you know, I don't really know a lot of things and I feel like I, don't have a lot of valuable contributions to the conversation. And to some extent, I feel like that that is true because I'm still learning and I don't have a lot of experience. Uh, but at the same time, I know confidence comes with time. Uh, you, you know, trying to just put yourself out there, like you said, John, and even at my job, just putting myself out there, asking, having the confidence to ask questions, even if they aren't, um, you know, extremely insightful questions, but just being willing to go out and ask questions is important. And so that's another big struggle that I've had in these past seven months is having real confidence um, in myself and, and what I have studied in the past is, is uh, something that I have to keep in mind that, you know what, I have done some work, you know, I can be confident enough to, to talk about XYZ. So yeah, those, those are, you know, a, a few areas that 
that I've learned since getting into the industry and, and struggles that I've had. Yeah, I think that's, you know, really important to keep in mind, especially as, you know, somebody that's new or newer to the industry. It's it's very easy to kind of get in this mindset where I have to know everything, especially if you get somebody that is interviewing you or something that's just like rattling off all these questions right. that seems they know everything when in reality they probably don't. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I think that's, you know, definitely something to kind of keep in perspective, you know, because especially with like entry level roles, I mean, you know, ultimately you're not being hired in to know everything, you know, you're, you're being hired in to come and contribute and hopefully your skills and knowledge line up with what the, the position is looking for and what the team is looking for. And, you know, definitely as far as companies and departments and teams like that, the amount of resources or kind of the development pipeline, I guess you could say that exists, you know, that's going to vary. Um, and you just kind of have to try to find, you know, where you fit and it might not be the first company that you apply to. It might be, you know, the 50th company you apply to or something, but, um, you know, definitely, definitely don't lose the sight of that. Not, well, nobody knows everything and nobody is going to ever know everything. And, um, as long as you keep learning, you know how to find answers. I think that is really, uh, really an important thing. That is good. Yeah. That's a good insight. For so, sure. uh, how to find answers. Yeah, that's good. Last question for you. And then we'll kind of wrap up here, yeah. but, um, so kind of wrap everything up. What are, you know, like the one or two or three, however many you got, uh, the, the most important tips that you would give to somebody that is either, you know, starting out, uh, at the beginning of their journey, trying to get into a, a degree program, or even just at an entry level, somebody trying to land their first job. Um, you know, what, what are some tips that you would give them? Oh man, there's so many. Uh, I think what we've talked about uh, this evening, focusing on the foundations to begin with, I think is really important. We can get caught up in maybe some of the cool trendy stuff, but if you are a student, you focus on just the foundations of IT. You don't even really touch security at the beginning. It's going to pay leaps and bounds later when you are actually learning security. I think that's a really important one. Uh, two is is building your network and whatever that way that is, like we've talked about tonight, you know, whether that's connecting with people online, on meetups, a combination of both. Uh, that That is really, really important. And then um, believing in yourself that you can do it and, and taking the opportunities that are presented in front of you. Not everyone, unfortunately, is going to have the opportunity of having, say, an extensive network. That's just how it, how it happens sometimes. So if there are general IT opportunities or even the help desk, um, if, that, if that is an opportunity, take it. But if, if you want to believe in yourself, you know, keep pushing forward and um, continue to move forward with knowing that you, you can do it. it. It may take a long time, but you can do it. And it's really cheesy, but that, that those are some of the things that I've learned so far. And there's probably so many other lessons that I'll learn because I'm just a beginner, right? Uh, so what, are, what would you say, John? What, what would be some of the tips that you would advise students or candidates in my position or who just got out of my position or who are in position students who are just getting into to cybersecurity. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, definitely building your network is huge. Um, that is one thing that it may not necessarily pay off in the immediate future, uh, or in the, in the present, but over your career, you know, it, it's going to begin to help you. If you go to meetups, you go to conferences, whatever, and meeting people and just trying to connect with people, trying to build that professional relationship and kind of your personal brand. Um, you know, I mean, that that's just, it's going to pay off so much. And then really, yeah, just trying to uh, continue your path, right? Like continue prog uh, progressing. So think of it as kind of like, um, kind of like a race, like 
getting into IT or starting out in like help desk or something like that, when you're trying to get into cybersecurity is not a bad thing. You know, one of the most important things that you can do is getting experience, getting opportunities, um, you know, all that stuff matters because at the end of the day, to be a better professional, you have to have more experience, you have to have more knowledge. And especially at, you know, the highest levels of whether, whether it's management, if it's IT, if it's cybersecurity, you know, any of these areas, um, you know, you want to be the one that's had a lot of experiences because that's what's going to get you the better jobs. That's what's going to get you the better pay. That's what's going to get you ultimately the most flexibility that you can get in your career. Because you know, starting out, it can be hard, uh, but you know, you're going to start to build up that knowledge, that kind of uh, bank of experience. And, you know, you may continue to run into new situations. I mean, it's pretty much inevitable. But um, a lot of situations that come up, you know, you can rely on previous experiences or past experiences and those opportunities that you took advantage of. And uh, it's it's going to do nothing but help you. So I would say don't don't get discouraged with what's hap uh, with what happens today. But, you know, keep looking towards the future, have a plan, try to keep um, keep trying to map out, you know, your journey and have those goals and you'll you'll get there. So it's great advice. Great advice. So um, I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining us. And, you know, this has been an awesome interview. If you weren't able to watch this live, uh, that's OK. It's going to stay up for uh, for um, watching. So you can on demand watch it on YouTube. If we didn't get to your question, I'm sorry. We we only had so much time. I'm sure Grant would love to answer questions for eight hours. But <laughs> But, um, you know, a lot of great information in here and I would definitely, you know, watch this from the start if you joined us late, um, because there's a lot of great content throughout. Um, and then, uh, also make sure to check out Grant's channel. If you're not already subscribed, go subscribe on his channel. He's got a lot of great content on there. Uh, and then also, you know, like and comment and subscribe and share this, uh, share this, uh, interview as well. But uh, Grant, if you want to hang out for a couple minutes after this. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, again, thank you everybody for joining us. And uh, until next time, see you later. Yep. Thank you.